<clears throat> uh, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Ua. Okay. Where are we? Ua. Whew. All right. Fine. All right. All right. How are you doing, there? Welcome back to Babylon Talmud. Today we send up Memdala the forty-four of Maser to Sota. Friends, 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 um, friends, friends. Today we're gonna complete the eighth parak of Maser to Sota. Uh, should we start the ninth parak? Oh my gosh, what do you say? Should we start? Maybe we'll just start the ninth parak tomorrow. But friends, let me tell you something about tomorrow. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, let's just finish the eighth parak today. And call it a day, and um, yeah, let's just do that. All right, so we're gonna start in Daf Mem Gimel Amud Beis, I think. Yeah, Mem Gimel Amud Beis, all the way at the bottom. Amr Bitzrok, Amr Rib Yochanan, Mishum Rebbe Leizer Ben Yaakov, Meis Tofes Arba Amis Letuma, that Midr Abonon, a corpse, um, the four Amis surrounding the corpse uh, is gonna be uh, Metame. Makes you tummy, right? Midar right? so only if you make an ohel around over the corpse, directly over the corpse. But midar abonon, even the four amos vicinity um, is uh, mitami. <coughs> oh, oh wait, I think I'm okay. I think I'll survive. <coughs> I don't want to cough into the mic. <coughs> How can I cough without coughing? Ha ha! Now that's an interesting skill. I have a good idea. Let me pause the video. All right, let's go weiter. So, oh, we talk about Mishnah, I think. Chotzer, ooh, dude, this is fun stuff. All right, it's only a few lines, though. Chotzer akever, ooh, ha'omid besocha tohor, ooh, v'sheish ba'ar ba'amis tivir b'shami v'sil omrim arba t'fachin. Fun stuff. Fun, fun stuff alert. Fun stuff alert. Okay. Uh, fun. All right. The way that they used to bury the people was that they would make these, uh, I don't know, like catacombs, I guess? That, that they would like basically dig out like a cave, okay? And then in the walls of the cave, they would like etch out these spaces that you can like stick a body into the etching out, in the, to the etching outing of the walling. So then, oh, okay, so that, so, Seder, so there was a cave, and obviously in the cave itself, it's gonna be an OLA maze. Now the thing is, how do you get into the cave? So the way that you got into the cave was that there would be this like pit outside of the cave and you would lower yourself into the pit and from the pit there was a doorway into the into the cave. Um, and that's and that's what's called the Chatzar HaKever. So the Chatzar HaKever is this little pit that from it you go into the into the cave where, 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 where the bodies are buried. Now there's two potential ways that you can get into the pit. One way to get into the pit is to lower yourself down into the pit. The other way to get into the pit is that, well, there could, you, there could be like an entrance into the pit with, you know, like some stairs going in from the side. Um, I mean, so you don't have to like, you know, lower yourself in, but you could, yeah, there's like, you know, like a, an entrance from the side that you can, you know, take stairs down into the, into the pit, into the Chatzar HaKever, and from there you would then enter into the um, uh, cave where the corpses are. Now, so... Um, if we so second line of the Gemara, Chotzer Akever, so this pit the, from which you enter into the cave, Haomi Besocha. If a fellow is standing in the pit, Tahor, he's Tahor because he's not in the cave. Vehu Sheihu Ba'arbaamis. However, that is only if there are four. The the, the this this Chotzer Akever, this pit is four Amis by four Amis. Tivir Beishamim. That's Beishamim's opinion. Beis Hillel Omer. Whereas Beis Hillel say, I bought Tfachim. You know, it just needs to be four tfachim. By four tfachim, that would be enough. And you would, you would be tahor. When do Beis Hillel say that four tfachim by four tfachim is enough? Shepischa milamayla. That is if the entrance to the pit is from above, that you lower yourself down into the pit. But if the entrance into the pit is from the side, that you like, you know, take stairs or a path down, you know, like a, a, a is is a can you take a ramp down to something? Or does ramp imply that you go up to it? Oh, that's an interesting question. A a decline. But if there, if you enter it from the side, then everybody agrees, both Beisham and Basil agree that it would have to be four Amis. If you lower yourself down into the pit, it could even be four Tvachin. But if you come in from the side, then it would have to be four Amis. Once the Gemara says one second, I would think Punkt Fakert. 
מן הצד מדריד ונופק. מלמעלה, just one second, so from, if the, end, if the exit, entrance and exit is from the side, so you could potentially get in and out of the chotzer, of this pit, without ever coming into contact with Tomas Ames, right? You can go from, you know, you can go down the stairs into the, into the pit, never go into the cave, and leave, and never come into contact with a mace. So I would think from there, you know, that, so, so Basilo would say in that case, four tfachim is enough. However, however, milimayla, if you're lowering yourself down and then subsequently having to get out from directly above, yefshir dulomayil, certainly you're going to be making an ohel over the cave and you're definitely going to be coming within four amis of the, of, 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 of a mace. So, elo, bomidvar mamurim, so then, so then, um, when do we say this? She pischa min hatzad. Oh, so, so, so I'm saying, so, I'm sorry. So, so if you, if you raise yourself out of the pit, so then, Mistama, you're going to put, if you have to, you know, hoist yourself out of the pit, you're going to put your hands over the, over the cave. And I assume the point is that, you know, depending on how the, 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 the corpses were buried, the tumma would go up and you would be making an ohel over, over the mason. Okay, so therefore, you have to do a So then, I would. So no. So what do we just say? So Basil says that 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 this pit could even just be for tefachim by four tefachim. They then said something strange, which is that, but for tefachim by four tefachim is only when the pit is above. But we say, but what a second! If the pit is directly above, and it's it's so narrow that it's for tefachim by four tefachim. Definitely, you're going to have to hoist yourself out, and you're going to put your hands over the cave, and you're going to become tummy. So that wouldn't make sense. So, where am I? So, so rather flip it around. No, so when do we say four tfachim by four tfachim is enough? Is shepischem in atzad is as long as the entrance is from the side. Then it can even just be four tfachim by four tfachim, right? Because you could just get in, get out, never come into contact or make an oil over any of the corpses. Avo, pischem in the but if the entrance is above, then Arba Amis, everyone agrees, it would, then the, the pit would have to be for Amis, by four Amis, so that you can get in and out without um, becoming Tomei. Now this is specifically a Chotzer, uh, you know, this is specifically because there is a separate pit, right? I Meaning you have the cave, and next to it you have this pit, and there are walls separating the pit and the cave, and for that reason, and you are not Tomei. Go, let's go by there for a second. Of Ames, but I'm But in general, a corpse would make four Amis in its vicinity Tomei. So we see that meaning even though when you're standing in the pit, you might be within four Amis of a corpse, but because there are walls between you and the corpse, so, so therefore you can remain Tahor. Um, but in general, if you would just have a corpse, so then it would make uh, everything within for Amis and Tommy. All right, that was the hard part of the page. I think that was the hard part. Was there other hard parts? No, I don't think so. No, 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 I don't think so. No, I don't think there's any. Tomorrow is going to be a mess, but uh, not even that messy. It's just these pages are just so big at this point because there's no toast list. The pages are so big that if there's any kind of challenging part to the page, it just makes it so difficult because there's just so much of it. Okay, anyways, but today I think is relatively smooth sailing. Okay. So who is a fellow who betrothed a woman? Um, you can go home. The rabbis taught, Asher Eiras, Echad Ma'aris Es Absul of Echad Ma'aris Eso Amone. So when it says Asher Eiras, so, so that's whether you are getting engaged to a, um, besula, to somebody who hasn't been married before, or whether you are getting engaged to somebody who has been married before, or even if, 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 um, you're marrying your brother, your, your late brother's wife, right? Even if you have five brothers, umeis echol men, bamilchome, and one of the brothers died in the war. So now there is Yibum. So all four brothers could potentially be the Yavam. And therefore they can all go home. Kulan Chosen, they all go back. Lo 
Lock, okay, period. Now, lo lakach v'lo lakacha. The, the pastor could have just said, lo lakach. Why did it say lo lakacha? Her, specifically. Pride la amana l'koyen gadol. It excludes an amana to koyen gadol. Gusha v'achutsu l'koyen hejit. Or a uh, divorcee or a chalutzi to a koyen hejit. Right, because that's not allowed. Mamzer is in the Israel. Bas Yisrael l'mamzer l'nosin. All of these are relationships that are not allowed. So um, you would not go home from war on account of those relationships. Let's say that this Tana is not like Rabbi Yosei Aglili, because if we were Rabbi Yosei Aglili, we don't need to, to exclude these forbidden relationships, because the Rabbi Yosei Aglili, according to Rabbi Yosei Aglili, when the Pasuk says that if somebody is, uh, you know, he's a fearful, he's a scared guy, and he uh, has a soft heart, so that means somebody who's done a virus. So Mimele Rabbi Yosef Agli would say that these forbidden relationships, you would go home because you're a sinner, because you're doing a virus. So how could we say that these relationships would stay in the battle, right? Meaning we, we just said that if you got engaged, then you would go home. But if you got engaged to a Amon of the Kohen Gadol, Gush of Achilus of Kohen Hedjid, etc., you would stay to fight. But one second... According to according to Biosa Lili, you would not stay to fight because you're a sinner. You'd go home because Mia Isha Yari Verachaleva. So the Gemara answers, Afilutem Rabbiose Aglili. You can even say that the that 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 this is Rabbiose Aglili because still they would um um however still because Kidraba, it's like Rabba Dam Rabba the Olam Enochaiv Ad Shiyivo. Rab, Rabbi says that in all these cases, right, Amon Lukon Gadol, Gushav Achlutz Lukon Ejid, etc., the issue is only if they have Bia, right? Well, only once they have Bia are they actually doing the Avera. So therefore, if they're just engaged and they never had Bia, and, and, you know, Amon Lukon Gadol, etc., so they haven't actually sinned yet. So they would not go home because of Hayori uh, Verach Halevav, and they also would not go home for having been engaged because it's, it's a forbidden relationship. Matam, how come, Matam lo yikach, how come, right, we say in these forbidden relationships, relationships that they can't get uh, engaged, bishum lo yichalo, because you don't want to make them a cholo when you uh, have beer. Bishum ochi, eno loke ad so we see that malchus and the iser is only once there is beer. But, um, so therefore, at this stage, when they're only engaged, so they would not be a sinner yet, and also they would not go home because they wouldn't go home for these relationships. Tanar Abonon, the rabbi said, Asher, Bono, Asher, Noto, Asher, Eras. That the, uh, the Gemara says, the Brisa says, that when the Pasuk says, um, he who built a house, he who planted a vineyard, he who gets engaged, Limda Teir Derech Eretz, that the Torah is teaching us how to live our lives. She yivne odom bias, a fellow should first build a house. Beita karim, he should plant a vineyard. Vachakach isa isha, and only after that should he uh, get married. Vav shloima amr b'chach maso, and even shloima said in his um, uh, wisdom, hachin b'achutz melachtecha, prepare your work outside. Ve'atda b'sade loch, and uh, prepare it in the field. Acher. And then afterwards you build your house. Right? So first build a house. That is then build a, uh, a uh, then plant a uh, vineyard. One second, I'm just looking something up. Yeah, okay. Then plant a vineyard. And then build your house. That is to get married. So first, uh, build a house, then plant a vineyard, and only then should you get married. Okay. I haven't built a house or planted a vineyard yet. Uh, come to think of it. Dover uh, um, Alternatively, uh, prepare uh, your, your work outside the mikra. First, you got to study Chumash, Tanakh. Uh, then learn Mishnais. Then you learn Gemara. When I grew up, we pretty much just went straight to the Gemara. I mean, we did a little bit of Mishnayis first, but uh, maybe a little bit of Chumash. Yeah, the, the Gemara is where is where they want you to be. That's um, Tanakh and Mishnayis. That's Gemara. Ooh, uh, 
That's uh, doing good deeds. I'm not exactly sure what that means. Well, drosh v'kabosocher means learn and, and get reward for learning. Um, I don't know if it means like, okay, now and, and, and then uh, you'll have the tools to like be able to learn and, and receive reward. Yeah, drosh v'kabosocher comes up in the in, in Masech the Sanedrin, in the context of these things that never happened, or at least opinion of the Gemara said that they never happened. And then, uh, and so why do they exist in the Torah? So that we can learn it and get a reward for studying Torah. Now these people do not go back from uh, the war. Habona base Shai A fellow builds a gatehouse, a portico, a gallery. All right. Tana So we had also said that if a fellow just rebuilds an existing house, Imamish rebuilds the exact same house, so then he doesn't go back from war for that house. But imhosid bodimos. Echod If he added, you know, one row of bricks or something that, you know, yeah, he made some some new uh, addition, then that's enough that he can go back for. Says Rebbeleizer also, if a person builds a brick house in Sharon, apparently those houses would you'd have to like rebuild them every few years, and therefore, you know, it's, it's not really so such a exciting thing to have to rebuild this new house every few years it's not like you know you're building a brand new house it's like a once in a lifetime thing it's like no every few years they have to rebuild their house so you wouldn't go back from that every seven years you'd have to redo it twice and then these people they, they, they it's so obvious that they don't uh, have to go to war they, they just don't even leave they right, right they just stay home if he built a new house and he's already, I think it means he already like moved in and basically, you know, let him enjoy it for a year. So when it says a, 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 what does the Apostlech say? It says, The fellow has a new wife. So all I know is if he marries a besula. How do I know that even if he gets married to an Amono, or if he gets married to a Grusha, um, we're also talking about that, that he wouldn't leave the house if they got married. It says Isha, whoever he gets married to, um, whether she's a Basula, whether she's an Amono, whether she's a Grusha. If that's the case, then why does it say Chadasha? New. Misha Chadasha Lo. Well, she has to be new to him. To the exclusion of if he's just remarrying somebody who he's already married to, well then that's not new. So he would not uh, go back for more for that. So he doesn't go out to fight. Okay, so maybe he doesn't go out to, to, to the war, but maybe he you know, provides food and water and fixes roads. No, he doesn't do anything at all. He just stays home. So maybe I'll also include somebody who builds a house but has not yet moved in. He, he planted a vineyard and has not yet uh, uh, done uh, He got engaged but not yet married. Tamadomar all love. It says, a love, a love, iata mavir. Specifically, in these cases where he's already married, he already moved in, um, you know, he already uh, has uh, done the netter of I. So, iata mavir. In these cases, you don't go home. Avalata mavir, alachirim. But in other cases, um, wait, what? In, in those cases, you don't go and contribute in any way, you just stay home. Um, but in other cases, you would go and fix roads and things. So if it says that he doesn't write lo yavor, so why do I also need lo yetze? Two lavs in the same pasuk. Precisely uh, that to, to indicate that if um, he does go, so then then he would be violating two mitzvahs lo sase. Very very interesting. Says the uh, final mishnah in the eighth parak of Masechet Soto. V'yosva shotrim ledaber elohim. And then the officers spoke to the to the people. That when it says somebody who is fearful and has a soft heart, 
That's what it means. He's a fearful fellow with a soft heart. That he won't be able to, you know, stand up into the demands of the war. And see a, a drawn sword. Rabbi Yosei of course, as we've seen already a few times, he says when it says, it means from somebody who has sin, who has done sins. And the reason why the Torah says that if somebody has, I'm sorry, the fichach tosa lo atorah es kol elu sheyachzu biglalon. And because we dismiss somebody who's sinned, we also dismiss people who got engaged and things like that. So if somebody's leaving and they say, "Oh, why are you leaving?" Well, you could say, "Oh, you know," or maybe not even if they ask him. The point is, if you see some guy leaving, you'll just assume that he's leaving because he got engaged or, or he built a house or whatever it is. You won't assume, oh, he's leaving because he's a sinner, right? So we have all these other reasons to leave so that, you know, even the, the people are leaving because they've, they've sinned, you know, it's not embarrassing to them. Okay. Fine. Um, okay. Rabiosi Omer says, Rabiosi, Almone the Kohen Gadol, if Take in Almone, Marries a uh, Oh, so says of Yosi Aglili. What's an example of Yoiv Rachalevav of these people who have sinned? Amonu the Kohen Gadol, Gushav Achlutz the Kohen Hedjit, Mamzeris, etc. Right, those cases. The Gemara is going to ask, you know, what's the difference? So I think the Gemara asks, what's the difference, right? Yeah. Okay. V'hoya says the Mishnah. And then when the shotrim, the officers, the officers are done speaking to the people, and then they would, says the pasuk, they would, they, they would appoint uh, officers uh, to at the head of the uh, nation. It says the Mishnah and also behind the, the nation. So at the front of the uh, at the front lines, they would have people who would help people up, right, to help out the injured. There would be other people at, at the back lines, and with 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 iron axes in their hands, and anybody who wants to run back, these people with the iron axes could uh, axe them in the shin. Oh wait, no, or in the thigh, in the legs. They they can axe them. The reason for this is because so the Gemara is going to ask. It sounds like it's backwards. And the Gemara suggests to flip it around. So let's flip it around. Because the beginning of, 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 of the downfall is, is the fleeing. And therefore, we just want fleeing to not be an option. And, and therefore, there won't be a downfall. Shunem, as the Pazit says, Nos Yisrael if plishtim, v'gam ha'gefa gedola, yisabam, that the uh, Yidin ran away from the Philistines and there was also a great plague. Lalo nu Omer, and it also says, v'enusu anshe Yisrael if ne plishtim, that the, that the Yidin ran away from the Philistines and they all died. So we, we don't want to uh, run away. Um, now, when do we say, right, we've been talking the past few days about people who can go home from war. So when are there exemptions? When are there people who can go home from war? That's by optional uh, 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 wars, wars that are not Muhammad's mitzvah. I think I'm always going to explain what these are. But if it's a if it's a mitzvah to to go fight, it's a mechemis mitzvah. So in every, there's no exceptions there. You know, if you built a new house, it doesn't matter. If it's a mechemis mitzvah, everyone goes. Right? Even a chosin and a kala. Amr Rabbi Yehuda says Rabbi Yehuda b'amet v'amimurim b'mechemos mitzvah. So Rabbi Yehuda Taka says that no. When can people go home by mechemis mitzvah? Aval b'mechemos chova. But in obligatory wars, Hakol Yotzin, everyone goes Afilu Chosim Mechedjo Vichal Mechupasa, even a Chosim Kala. Uh, the Gemara is going to explain, you know, what what these, um, what's a Chova, what's a Mitzvah, what's a Rishus. Fine. In fact, the Gemara, Ma'ika Ben Rabbi Yosi, Rabbi Yosi Aglili. What's the difference between Rabbi Yosi and Rabbi Yosi Aglili? Rabbi Yosi Aglili said that Mi'aisha Shayari Verach, Mi'aisha Shayari Verach Alevav. So the, it says Rabbi Yosi, that's somebody who sinned. Says says Rabbi Yosi, that's Amman of the Kohen Gadol, Gushiv Achlutz of the Kohen Ejid, etc. No, they're saying the same thing. If you're a sinner, you go home. So Ike Benayi the Nafkamina is Avera de Rabbonon. Ho ho. What if he's done Averes mid de Rabbonon? Rabbi Yosi, his examples were specifically mid de Oraisa, right? Amman of the Kohen Gadol, Gushiv Achlutz of the Kohen Ejid. Those are those are Averes de Oraisa. So, 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 come on, so, so, but Rabbi Yosef says any sins, even, 
rabbinic sins. Kamanaz la adetanya. The kud is the following price ago. Soch bin tefila le tefila averu hu biyado v'chazer alea me orche amulchama. That if somebody speaks between his tefillin, sh- uh, putting on his tefillin shel yad and putting on his tefillin shel rosh, it's an avera midir. It's an avera. No, it's an avera midir abon. It's an avera, and he would go back from war on account of it. So we see. So we see that. Um, so we see that that even for averus der abonan you would go back from war. So who's that like? Kiman kribiosi aglidi. It's like kribiosi aglidi. Mantano. Lehad dutanu rabban right because Rabbi Yosi would say only mitzvah averus teraisa. Man tanu lehad dutanu rabbanon. Who is the author of that which the rabbis taught? Shama kol kronos. If he hears the um, sound of uh, the horns, veratia, and he got and he and he got uh, um, 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 scared, um, um, panicked. Hagafa shrisin. You heard the 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 the, the shields smack, smacking against each other's. Crashing against each other, Vertia, and he panicked. Tirtua Charovos, Umaim Shosus in Loa Birkov. If he um, sees the swords and he, uh, you know, pees in his pants, Lemaise, Vchose, um, he goes back. Come on, Lemi Rabbi Kiva. Let's say that's Rabbi Kiva who understands. Isha Yari Vrachalevav, literally, that if he can't handle the action. Velo Rabbi Yosaglili, it's not Rabbi Yosaglili who understands that Yari Vrachalevav as a sinner. Filu Rabbi Yosei Aglili Mode, to which the Gemara says no. Here, even Rabbi Yosei Aglili would agree that he uh, that uh, right, that this fellow should go back. Mishum Dichsev Floimas Es Levav Echov Kilvavo, because a person like this who's um, uh, clearly panicking, he can cause others to panic, and we don't want that. So therefore, uh, even Rabbi Yosei Aglili would agree that if a fellow is panicking, he should definitely uh, not be there. So okay. So, so we had then said that, like, we want to prevent people from running. So the Mishnah had literally said, because the beginning of, um, running is falling. So, so, what it should say is that the, the, the beginning of falling, of losing, is running away. That's what it should say. So, so we say, okay, fine, yeah, say that. Say that because the beginning of the downfall is running away, so don't run away. Fine. So when do we say that um, that like there are people that can go back? So the Tanakhama had said by Muhammad by 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 optional wars. So Amr Biochanon Rishu Amr Biochanon Rishus the Rabbanon that when the rabbis say that you can go back for Muhammad uh, Sarishus Zohi Mitzvah the Rabbi Yehuda that is the equivalent of, of Rabbi Yehuda's Mitzvah. Right? I Meaning the Rabbanon had said you can go home for Muhammad Sarishus. But for Muhammad's mitzvah, you have to, nobody can go home. Rabbi Yehuda had said, a Muhammad's mitzvah, people can go home, but Muhammad's chova, nobody can go home. So, the equivalent of the, where the rabbis say that people can go home, uh, for Muhammad's mit- rishos, that's, uh, the equivalent of where Rabbi Yehuda says that people can go home, and he called it Muhammad's mitzvah. Mitzvah der Rabbanon is a chova der Yehuda, and when the rabbis say that by a mitzvah, uh, nobody can go home. So that's like where Rabbi Yehuda says that for uh, a mechemes mitzvah, nobody can uh, mechemes chova, nobody can go home. Amar Rav Mechemes Yehoshua lich lichbosh divrei akol chova. Okay, so the wars of Joshua to capture Eretz Yisrael when they initially came to Eretz Yisrael, everyone agrees that that would be a a chova, and nobody would be able to go home. Mechemes beis David leRevacha divrei akol rishos. And uh, when when, when uh, we're talking about um, you know the wars of King David to expand to conquer more territory, so that would be you know optional. And yes, these people would be able to go home. The people who fit the criteria that we've been discussing. Keep where there's a difference between Rabbi Yehuda and the rabbis, where the rabbis call it Milchemes Harishus and Rabbi Yehuda calls it Milchemes um, Mitzvah, is Ovde Kochavim. I'm sorry, uh, if there are a lot of idolaters around, and right, you don't want the idolaters to have an effect on you and to be around in your life, so you go to war against them. So my karile mitzvah, my karile rishos. So the chacham call that a rishos, whereas Rabbi Yehuda calls it a mitzvah. But they both agree that people, right, the people who meet the criteria we've been discussing would be able to go home. 
nafkemina. What's the nafkemina? Who cares if you call it a rishos or if you call it a mitzvah? So lasuk be mitzvah, lasuk be mitzvah she potum in a mitzvah. The nafkemina is well. If it's a mitzvah, well then the principle of osik be mitzvah potum in a mitzvah applies. But if it's not a mechamis mitzvah, so then if it's a mechamis or a shus, well then there's no mitzvah going on, and we wouldn't say osik min mitzvah potum in a mitzvah that if you're busy doing this mit right, if you're busy doing one mitzvah, you're potum from doing other mitzvah. So if it's a mechamis mitzvah. You're busy doing a mitzvah, so you're potter from other mitzvahs. But if it's only a mechamis rishus, so then you're not going to be potter from other mitzvahs. Ajin alach, mashuach mechama, we'll come back to you, perek mashuach mechama. Friends, now we're going to stop here. I don't know if this is a good decision, but we're going to stop here. Um, at the end of uh, the eighth perek of Mesechta uh, Sota. And tomorrow we're going to start from here, friends. I don't know how I'm going to get through tomorrow's daf. It's ginormous, and it's not super easy but all right i'll see you all here tomorrow to learn daf memhe of mesechta sota peace out